the thing that I think the high tech and, and especially Silicon Valley are willing to do is they're willing to understand or try, try a different way, a method perhaps, of doing business as it relates to their personnel instead of dictating historically that this has worked and you have to uh, be molded into, into this culture in this context. I think the church could spend a little bit more time listening to its creative minds within its walls instead of saying, you know, this has worked historically and this is how it's going to work. We need to bring the best inside of our employees out mm -hmm. not just tell them to do what we want them to do but mm -hmm. to hear how they're birthing new thoughts and new ideas and they're offering their own creativity and they're taking ownership over their area and let them do that yeah. and in my particular context i have a really young really great really fun cool staff i'm 34 the biggest mistake i made early on was thinking that they would all be excited about my ideas because i'm creative and i'm young and it's the right kind of thing and it doesn't matter, because as soon as they're mine, they're not theirs, so it's only work, not play. It's very easy in church ministry, though, to accidentally put people in silos while you think you're being collaborative. I just think that pastoral ministry is uniquely predisposed towards silos while, while forcing us, while, while deceiving us into thinking we're collaborative. Then I, I get concerned with these conversations as ones who's slightly older, I find the church very collaborative. I find that the fact that over the last 25 years yeah. the church has put in itself the CEO model when in fact the church ancient was not that way. She's collaborative every time she worships, if she understands how to worship. And that worship is the place of theology, it is the place of knowledge, and we've lost that.